today we're going to talk about six brand new releases. And when I say brand new, I mean like within the last couple months, I think. Um, and these are just an assortment. Some are more designer, some are indie, some are niche. Uh, but let me just run down and tell you which six I have. So first up is Midnight Jasmine from Pearlescent Parfums. This is their brand new release. And uh, Daniel Gallagher did send this to me for free, just FYI. Uh, everything else that I have, I paid for, which it's just decants and samples because most of these were kind of expensive or hard to get. Um, for example, the Shalimar Millicene Vanilla Planifolia. I got a decant of that, but have not been able to find a bottle to purchase. Um, then I have a new one from Francesca Bianchi. It's from her new brand called Hedonic, and this one is called Divine Perversion. And then the last three are little samples I got from Lucky Scent that I decanted. I have Pure Distance number 12, which is very expensive. <laughs> um, I have Byredo uh, Mumbai Noise, which was just released, and then also another very expensive one. This is Jusette Parfums Leche Flame, I guess is how you say it. Um, so those are the six that we're going to talk about. So stay tuned, and we'll get right into it. All right, so let's start with the one that I have a full bottle of, and that is Midnight Jasmine from Pearlescent Parfums. Again, Daniel sent this to me for free, and he's, of course, the perfumer, Daniel Gallagher. He also has the brand Gallagher Fragrances. If you're not familiar with that, I really like uh, a lot of his scents. And I will tell you, this is my favorite one from Pearlescent so far. They now have three. So this is, like I said, Midnight Jasmine, but you'll see there's number three because it's the third scent that they've released from this house. And let me go ahead and spray it here. Now, uh, this one is very potent, much like how most of his uh, Gallagher fragrances are very potent. This is as well, like the whole room, just almost immediately fills with it. So this one has these notes here. They always put them on the package, which I really like. So it has apple crisp, plum, cinnamon, jasmine, rose, golden honey, brown sugar, tonka bean, sandalwood, and amber. Now, if upon first read of those notes, you start to think, huh, it sounds a little bit like Gallagher Rosé all day, you are correct, my friend. This definitely does remind me of Rosé all day, which I really, really like. It does not have the stainless steel note, which probably for a lot of people is good because it puts them off. Um, but the apple crisp that's in there, uh, or in this one, is very reminiscent of the um, Rosé all day from Gallagher. Now, I definitely pick up the jasmine, but it's not in Dalek here, it's not heady. It's really quite pleasant. And like I said, this is a powerful fragrance. I tested it on skin a few days ago and it lasted all day. And I mean, it projected uh, projected really well for probably the first half of the day, but it still like lasted throughout the whole day. So it lasted a long time, projected nicely. Um, and like I said, this is just a really nice fragrance. If you like Rosé all day, I think you're gonna really like it. So to me, this one, it, I get the apple crisp. I definitely get that sort of uh, sweet brown sugar thing. The jasmine's very prominent here. Mm, I really, really like this. I would say the, uh, the rose is less prominent to me. Definitely get a little bit of spice. And then I would say when it dried down, I got more of the ambery sort of quality that is listed on here. But in the opening, I don't get that as much touch woody, but mostly you're getting that sort of uh, sweet apple crisp jasmine combo. And I really like it. It's delicious, but also uh, with that like more prominent floral, it makes it not just a gourmand, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of this one. So uh, that's Midnight Jasmine from, there it goes, Pearlescent Parfum. So check that out if you haven't uh, and if it sounds good to you. All right, next up, let's do some of these little... Uh, Lucky Scent samples, God, these are so tiny. Um, I always decant them into sprayers because you know I hate dabbers. But uh, the first one, let's see here. This one's going to be by Rado's Mumbai Noise. I don't really know much about it. I just saw that it was released and I was like, hey, let me get that sample uh, when I placed an order with Lucky Scent recently. So this one's really interesting. First of all, by the way, I don't know who created this. I couldn't find a perfumer anywhere. This one I, I don't love, but I don't hate. It has sort of a, like, it's a very woody sort of uh, quality to it up front. But I also get something a little bit reminiscent of, I don't know, something that's almost like resinous, perhaps. There is sort of a coffee vibe to it, but it's not overly dominant. It's just like a light touch of coffee in here. Yeah, I'm not sure that I love it, but I also don't dislike it. It's really interesting. This one, I'm trying to think if it reminds me of anything. It doesn't really, it does have sort of an earthy quality to it as well. 
I'm not sure what it would be that's kind of pulling that, but yeah, nothing really that sweet. It's mostly like slightly woody, slightly earthy with a bit of a coffee vibe to it. Um, would I pay the, the buy rate price for this? No, I wouldn't, absolutely not. But uh, yeah, interesting. I haven't worn this on skin yet, uh, so I can't tell you how it performs, but guessing that it's from buy probably not very well, to be quite honest. Most of them don't. All right, next let's do Pure Distance number 12. Now I do have a uh, sampler set or like discovery set of Pure Distance fragrances, but it did not include number 12 because number 12 came out more recently and I bought that right before I think it came out actually. Um, so this one, <coughs> I, I breathed it in. <laughs> um, don't do that, don't breathe in your perfumes, not ideal. Um, so this one is created by Natalie, is it Feistower? I think is how you say her name. and. I like this one, not as much as maybe some of the others from Pure Distance, but I like it. And you can definitely tell the quality is there, which I will say that I noticed when I sniffed through the Discovery set is kind of true across the board. Like even the ones I didn't really care for, they smelled very high quality, which they should considering they cost an absurd amount of money. So this one to me smells like a spicy floral, like rose or and or geranium, like that kind of like combo or sometimes when they use geranium in place of rose, it kind of smells like that to me. Um, I think that the spice that's in here smells like cardamom. <laughs> um, so I think it's that that's in here. There are some other florals, I would imagine. It seems like there's some white florals in here as well. Maybe it smells like there's vetiver. I get that sort of like a hay-like sort of vetiver feel to this one. But um, yeah, it's really nice. It's very pretty. It isn't like really sweet or anything. Just like a nice, like I said, like sort of spicy floral woody fragrance. Now, again, I'm not sure I would pay the price for this one because I just don't love it. There are a couple from the house that I do really, really like a lot. And um, I have picked up two from them when they were on sale from Niche Essence. If you don't know them, they're a uh, perfume shop in, is it Toronto? I don't remember. They're in Canada, but they do ship to the US. And recently they did a 30% off sale. So that's why I took advantage of that and bought some Pure Distance then. But they might, I think last year they did it for Black Friday as well. So if you aren't familiar with that, uh, that store, um, maybe sign up for their newsletter or their Facebook group because usually they'll post there or send an email if they're having sales. And they have some fragrances that are hard to find discounted. So I like to order from them. They also carry Ducita, um, which you know I love, Asara especially. And so if you're interested in any Ducita fragrances, then when they run the sale, you can get those at a discount too. All right, next up is the Leche Flame from Jusette Parfum. Uh, and I've smelled, uh, was it? Gourmand Bacour, I think is the name from this house because Hillary from uh, the Borough Nerdy Fragrance Reviews, she brought that for me to smell once and I really like that one, but I'm not too familiar with this house overall. Uh, okay, so, oh good Lord, I've smelled this one before and it's not bad necessarily, but holy smoke, like actual holy smoke. <laughs> it is so smoky. Um, one of the smokiest fragrances I think I've ever smelled. And just like breathing the air, it just feels like I'm breathing in actual smoke. It's so like, I mean, obviously not actual smoke because I don't feel like my lungs are turning black, but um, it's so incredibly smoky. And it is called Leche Flame, so I get it, I get it. But holy cow, if you wanna smell very, very smoky, this is the one to go with. Um, so anyway, I think that the perfumer for this house is Jimmy Bowden, I think is his name. Um, it's so smoky. Uh, it's honestly, the smoke is so strong in here. It's difficult for me to pull out much else. I do think that there's supposed to be tobacco in here. I think, I think it's supposed to have like a cognac, like a booziness to it. That I can sort of get, like if you were gonna, if you ever had those cocktails where they smoke them, <laughs> um, I don't know if you've ever seen those, they like fill up like a glass dome with smoke and they put the cocktail in there. So it does kind of remind me of that, uh, but smokier. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's got like a little bit of woodiness to it. It does sweeten up. I did spray this before and it does sweeten up and I like the dry down a lot more. I think there's like a the dried fruit quality to the cognac in this one, but it's very smoky like very, very smoky. For me, if I were going to wear this, which I think I will just for funsies, there's enough left that I can wear this. 
Uh, I'm going to either put it on when I'm not going out or put it on many hours before I go out. Cause like I said, when it dries down, the smokiness still there, it doesn't go away, but it calms down and some of the sweetness comes out. Um, and honestly, right now it's like starting to get like a little bit woody sweet, but still insanely smoky. So anyway, really interesting fragrance to smell. I would highly recommend you sample this and don't blind buy it because it was probably going to be overwhelming to a lot of people. The bottle's gorgeous, by the way. I'll put a picture somewhere, but yeah, I think it's really interesting. I do like the dry down uh, when I smelled it before, um, but that opening is powerful. So just FYI. All right, next let's do Divine Perversion, which is from Hedonic. Uh, this is, of course, Francesca Bianchi's new line. So she has her own house called Francesca Bianchi, but now she has a second one that she started called Hedonic. Um, I can't remember exactly the, the price of these, but I feel like it's not cheap and not crazy expensive for whatever size it is. Um, anyway, so this one, I would say it definitely doesn't smell exactly like a lot of the Francesca Bianchi fragrances, but I would say at the same time, you can tell that she created this. Like, it doesn't surprise me that she created this when I smell it. So right up front to me, there's this big note of like raspberry or some, I think it's raspberry that's in this. Um, very fruity up front, uh, pink pepper as well, and rose I get right away. Now, I also get that sort of orris butter or iris note that she uses a lot, which is why I said um, I think you can tell that she made it, even though it doesn't necessarily, I kind of have the exact same DNA of her Francesca Bianchi line. And then it has a leatheriness to it, maybe a little bit of woods. Not really that animalic, which a lot of, I'm saying that because if you're familiar with her fragrances, they often are very animalic. And this one is not so much. Maybe just a tiny bit. There's also something a little sweet in here. I don't know if it's vanilla or what, but yeah, I really like this quite a bit so far. Um, the, the fruitiness does die down a bit, which is good for me because it is a little bit like, like I'm not super into like fruits, especially like uh, raspberry and fragrances. So I do like when that starts to calm down, but it is pretty prominent right away. Yeah, so this is one I'll definitely wear through this and then kind of see, maybe I'll end up getting a bottle. The bottles look kind of cool. Um, again, I'll put pictures so you can see, but yeah, that one is called Divine Perversion and it's the first release from Francesca Bianchi's new line called Hedonic. All right, so I've been trying to be really good about not blind buying stuff, but this is one of those occasions when I wish I would have because this next one I really, really like. This is called Shalimar Millicene Vanilla uh, Planifolia. And this was created by Delphine Jelk with uh, Terry Bosser. This is gorgeous. I tried it, I wore it the other day and I love it. Um, I wish I would have bought a bottle because now I can't find it on the Guerlain website. It seems to be sold out already, which is disappointing. So obviously the idea here is it's a flanker of Shalimar, but with like a very prominent vanilla note, which if you think of like the vanilla Guerlainade, <laughs> as they call it, it's like that amped up, but yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. So to me, uh, this one, the, the citrus from Shalimar is still there, but not as bright as, or like not as loud as it is maybe in a lot of other flankers, but it's still there. You still get sort of like the lemony citrus. It definitely has that like woody leathery quality to it but it's a lot more vanilla than the original and also than at least the flankers that I've tried. I certainly haven't tried all of them, but this is certainly of all of them I've tried the most vanilla dominant and it definitely is a vanilla dominant fragrance. If you think about like taking like bourbon vanilla, I think is uh, maybe what they used or some sort of like really good quality, um, like a dark deep vanilla and adding that in with Shalimar, almost maybe in equal parts. So like just as much vanilla as Shalimar in there, that's what you kind of get here. So again, you can pick up a little bit of that like sort of like leathery quality from Shalimar, the citrus, but at the same time, it's almost equally as much vanilla as everything else. So the vanilla is definitely very dominant here. Maybe, I wouldn't really call this a gourmand, um, maybe ever so slightly, but it still has that beautiful uh, sort of powderiness that you get from the vanilla in Guerlain fragrances. Yeah, I just love this. I love it and uh, I hope that I can find a bottle of it eventually. Um, but right now I'll just have to make do with my little decant. I'm glad at least I've gotten to try it if I can't get a bottle, but 
Hopefully I can because it is really beautiful and personally my favorite flanker of Shalimar that I've smelled so far. All right, so those are the six new releases I wanted to talk about today. I'd love to hear if you've tried any of these. If so, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Uh, as always, thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Otherwise, I hope you all are having a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.